In this short video, I want to introduce predicate logic truth trees. So the way of introducing predicate logic truth trees is to go back and talk a little bit about propositional logic truth trees and sort of compare and contrast a little bit. So propositional logic truth trees, what we can do is for any propositional logic argument, we can apply the truth tree method and determine if the argument is deductively valid or invalid. More exactly, a truth tree method for propositional logic allows us to mechanically determine if a formula is entailed by, semantically entailed by, another set of formulas. So what it allows us to do is determine whether or not Z is entailed by P, Q, and R, just to use an example, or if Z is not entailed by these formulas. Now all this is well and good, but one of the problems with propositional logic truth trees is rooted in the language of propositional logic itself. That is, we can't take all the arguments that we intuitively think are valid and translate them into propositional logic. And if we can't do this, then we can't make use of the propositional logic truth tree method. That is, we can only use the method if we can get the argument into the language of propositional logic. But what we saw is there's a whole host of arguments, either in English or other formal languages, that we can't kind of reduce down to propositional logic. What we need is a more expressive language to capture all of these different arguments. So one example of a more expressive language is the language of predicate logic. And fortunately for us, we can adapt parts of the truth tree method to this language of propositional logic. Now the good of this is that the truth tree method will work for predicate logic. That is, we can um, apply some of the techniques and for certain arguments in predicate logic, the truth tree will work perfectly fine. To simplify things quite a bit, um, the bad of this is that it won't work for the entirety of the language. That is, there are some arguments in expressing the language of predicate logic where our truth tree method will just kind of repeat endlessly, and it won't give us a algorithmic way of determining whether or not the argument is an entailment or non-entailment. So in order to make use of the truth tree method for predicate logic, one thing that you'll need to know how to do is make use of the decomposition rules for, from propositional logic. In other words, in order to make use of the truth tree method for predicate logic, which we'll abbreviate as RL, you'll already need to know how to make use of the truth tree method for propositional logic. I'll put a couple links in the description below in case you want to refresh yourself on how to use the truth tree method for propositional logic. One of the things that you'll need to know how to do from propositional logic is that make use of the various truth tree decomposition rules. And what we'll do for predicate logic is we'll import all of the truth tree decomposition rules from propositional logic. So we'll make use of all of these decomposition rules. In addition, we'll make use of four new additional decomposition rules. These will apply specifically to formulas of predicate logic. So what I'd like to do in the remainder of this video is to talk about the notation of these decomposition rules and talk about the type of formula that each decomposition rule applies to. In this video, I won't go through how to make use of these decomposition rules. I just want you to be comfortable with identifying a formula and knowing which decomposition rule you should apply. So the first decomposition rule worth looking at is negated existential decomposition. And this is a rule that we'll abbreviate with not existential D. And negated existential decomposition applies to negated existentially quantified well-formed formulas. That is, formulas where the main operator is the negation and the operator with the next most amount of scope is the existential quantifier. So the idea here is if, if you saw a formula that is a negated existentially quantified formula, then you would apply the corresponding decomposition rule, which is negated existential decomposition. The next rule to take a look at is negated universal decomposition, which we abbreviate with not upside down AD, that is not universal D. And this decomposition rule applies to negated universally quantified well-formed formulas. 
That is formulas where the main operator is the negation and the operator with the next most amount of scope is the universal quantifier. So again, if you saw a formula of this form, you would apply the negated universal decomposition rule. Next, we have the existential decomposition, abbreviated as backwards ED, and this applies to existentially quantified well-formed formulas. That is formulas where the main operator is the existential quantifier. And so again, if you saw a formula where the main operator is the existential quantifier, the corresponding truth tree rule you would apply is existential decomposition. The final predicate logic decomposition rule is universal decomposition. And by now you might be seeing a pattern. This universal decomposition, abbreviated as upside down A for the universal quantifier, applies to universally quantified well-formed formulas, that is formulas where the main operator is the upside down A. So again, if you saw a formula where the main operator is the universal quantifier, you would apply the corresponding decomposition rule, which is the universal decomposition rule.